All right, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen, we just got the three, two, one from uh, Oz back there on the board tonight, managing the meeting. This is a regularly scheduled uh, meeting of the Sunderland Select Board. If we could call it to order at six, wow, thirty-two. And that's the impact of having a town administrator. Thanks for keeping us on time, <laughs> Jeff. This is this is a uh, uh, Jeff Kravitz. He's a town administrator. This is. His first live meeting, uh, and so he's been here a long day, Scott. So we have to have a quick meeting. The assessors, yeah. the assessors are here, so we're here it's at least good. until nine. It's, what do you only, think? it's only fair. <laughs> what do you think, Dave? I think so, Scott. Hey, could be. He said we'll take it easy on the new guy. <laughs> I walked in this afternoon and said, "Hey, new guy," and he said, pointed at Dave and said, "Well, isn't that him?" Yeah, <laughs> that's absolutely true. So thanks so much, Jeff, for coming to work with us, and we look forward to a long tenure and productive work here in the town of Sunderland. Tonight we've got a couple of budget hearings. We're meeting again with the Finance Committee. We've got some town office departments, and later on, police. We'll do some minutes, a little bit of updating, uh, some surplus equipment request. It's the season, right? You know when they go surplus, it, invariably it means something's going to get bought. So. Yeah. It's just the way it is. Um, that said, uh, no executive session. Uh, I'm sorry. We will finish an executive session. We have two sets of executive session minutes to approve tonight, and that's the only reason we're going to executive session because we hired him. So it's okay. Uh, to be released. They're to be reviewed. To be released. Correct. Right. Uh, that said, uh, any comments of the board to start? No, I know. No. Let her rip. We're all kind of leaned into the budget thing already. Finance committee, you guys are ready to go? Yeah. I, just, uh, <laughs> so, I just I just know yeah. I walked into the assessor's thing and they said they're a big increase. Uh-oh. So we'll find out what that all means. Right. I said I just hope it's going to Teresa. <laughs> and, they, and all the assessors laugh, so I don't know what that means. <laughs> we'll drill down on that. You want to start with the assessors? They are right here. Hey, assessors. Hey. How are you tonight? How are you? Well, good, thanks. So what's cooking in budget requests here for assessors? I got a Zobrio sheet in front of me, and that's kind okay. of about it. Well, first of all, I, I didn't know I was going to need more copies, but I'm, I amended the budget slightly because there was an addition error in the computer support. So okay. I gave all of the selectmen a new one. There you go, Tom. Oh Bigger boy. print, too. <laughs> um, anyway... Um, so we'll start with that. So computer support, uh, right now that line item goes to pay for uh, annual support for Patriot Properties who uh, hosts RSS Pro, and it also goes to Cartographic uh, Technologies uh, for our GIS web hosting. Now I'm asking for an increase of 1300 instead of 1400 because that was an error I noticed today when I was reviewing it. And the reason is, is we also went live with the Permit Pro, which is owned oh, right. by Point Software. Yep. And when they set up the database, they took my extract from Assess Pro, and that's just a static set of data. So any changes I make to that are not going to be reflected in Permit Pro unless I manually go in there and change it. So that would be like... A good example is today we had someone call and said, oh, well, we have a lot we want to get a permit for, but we don't have a number in Permit Pro. Well, between the time that I gave them the data in November and now, I have a number, and I have it in my Assess Pro, but it's not in Permit Pro. Or, yeah, that's it. So anyway, I had to go in there and manually fix it. So there is a solution to that. I can have Patriots write the code which will cost $800 one-time fee, and then Point will charge a $500 annual fee to nightly update the database from my Assess Pro, so that whenever I make a change in Assess Pro, it'll Updates change that, in yeah. the permitting. Yep. So until then, I'm gonna have to manually go mm -hmm. in, so I have to go in and change, when there's a deed, I'll have to change the names, I have to change the address, so it's, it's just kind of cumbersome, and that's not really what we were hoping for. We want it to be like a seamless, um, activity there so that's what that extra money is so it's 800 one-time fee to write the code and then a $500 annual cost to export the data is there enough volume 
for the exporting to make it to make it worth the 500 you think or like I do yeah because there's all these little changes like like I said if, if somebody has a lot and it like last year I, there's quite a few different uh, surveys I got where there's gonna be lot splits and stuff like that yep. so whenever there's the split that means a new number it means a new you know so that's another change I mean any little change yeah, yeah. you know yeah. so that that would take care of all the deed changes which there's multiple changes sometimes on the same property throughout the year. So it would change the owner's name, it changes the, you know, all the pertinent information. Yeah. So that when someone applies for a permit, it'll be to the right person. Because otherwise, if I don't go in there and manually change it now, somebody's gonna apply for a permit, it's gonna be the old owner's name, the old owner's address. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's important to have that updated. Yeah, so I think that would be uh, well worth it. Building commission, is that how it's worked in other towns you had this system in? I've never, this is the first time I've heard of that problem. And the big problem would be is the, um, I can't issue the permit if, you know, the person back. that's not the owner. Yep. So that would be a big error now that this is up and running, efficient otherwise. Um, but that would be a problem. Thank you. So, so assessors, clerk. Yes. Do you, do you ever charge any fees for the services that you perform? No, because uh, you mean, in regards to what? Well, some someone's changing properties and um, titles or names or lot line. No. But you never you never see you don't you don't charge for any. You of don't the charge for that. I don't believe you can charge for that. That's just part of the job. Well, it charges me then, every time I want. Every one of my licenses I have, they they charge me a hundred bucks <laughs> well, for this, two hundred and fifty dollars yeah. for that. So. I don't believe so. And now with this public records request, um, it used to be you had to ch you could charge for a copy or charge for a page. But I don't know the exact law. But this mass general law is if it, if it, it has to take X amount of time before you can start charging. Mm -hmm. So we don't even charge for that anymore. But the truth is, I hardly print any cards anymore now that we have the online GIS. Almost everything is ex people get online. There's very, very little that I have to print anymore. It, people look it up, and if I do need it for an appraiser, I don't have to print it because I can, I can um, get the card, and instead of actually print, I can make a PDF, and yeah, then I can put it in an email. It. So it's yeah. yeah. So there's there's no charging for that stuff. So that's that's the computer support explanation. Um, the uh, as far as our um, tax maps, that stays the same. There's no change there. And last year, I got rid of the index. So this is the first year we'd have an index because we have the online GIS because we were paying for that index. I believe it was like $400 a year. And as soon as it's printed, it's obsolete. So I said, why don't we get rid of that? And we'll put that money into the computer support in case I need some code written. Yeah. But there's not enough to cover this new thing for because the other, you know, they're always coming up with these things, Department of Revenue, they want you to have. So like one thing they want to have for everybody is they want to have a neighborhood code map layer. And so I'm kind of working on that now because, but that will need some code written too. But I'm not even asking for that in here. That's like down the road. So the point is there's always these updates they want you to do. So anyway. So right now, the mapping is just staying the same. So we get the paper maps, that's required. But as far as the index, there's no reason to have a paper index because if you go on GIS, that's current, that's live. So whenever I make a change, I do an export and it's live on GIS. So the paper is just a waste of money. Um, and then as far as our um, valuation vendor, there's no change in his budget. Um, and I did want to note that if you noticed last year, I asked for 15,400, but we were able to contract with Bishop. It's only 6,000. So there was a savings of 9,400 alone, just in that line item there. And he's been doing a very good job. He's local, he's in Agawam. He comes when I ask. Sometimes he just shows up if he's in the area and he's very responsive. And so, so far so good. And he hasn't even uh, sent us a bill yet. <laughs> For the other people, we're sending bills and not doing the work. So like in 2018, 
um, I got a bill from Patriot, and I said, well, what's this bill for? You didn't do the work. And he was like, what are you talking about? I said, you never came and did the cyclicals. You didn't do the photos. That's in the contract. I took the photos, and you never did the cyclicals. And he said, well, well, we'll come now. I said, no, it's too late. You already sent the bill, and the six-month period has gone by. So I got him to reduce the bill by $3,325. So I was like, well, you didn't do the work. I want that reduced. And then the second half of that uh, billing period, uh, he sends me a bill again. And I said, what are you doing? You sent me a bill and didn't do the work again. So I said, if you come and do the work, I'll, I'll pay the bill. Otherwise, you're not getting paid. So whew, all of a sudden, they sent somebody out here to do the permits. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's ridiculous. So anyway, we saved all that money, and we're getting better service so far. I have no reason to think it won't continue. Next year, for 2022, we'll have to go up a little bit because it'll be a revalue year. Hmm. But it's not going to be anywhere near what the previous amount was. Yeah. So then we'll come to uh, the general expenses. We're not asking for any more there, which that just pays for paper supplies and stuff. And I also pay for my uh, professional improvement and all that comes out of there. So any assessors meetings, UMass school, that all comes out of there, but we're not asking for any more there. But I am asking for an increase in my wages because I understand there was a wage study done, but there was some juggling of categories and I'm just feeling like maybe the job descriptions are not necessarily up to date. Like I looked in the file of the last and I attached it to yours. The job <coughs> description for the assessors was dated 2005. So there's a few things that have changed in 15 years. And even my job description that was written in 2014 has changed in six years a lot. I mean. DOR wants things done differently. They want more done in Gateway. I mean, this whole GIS, there's just a lot more, there's just a lot more to the job than there was before. So that's the reason why I put in for the increase and I attached to the budget, I attached a letter and I don't know if the Finance Committee got that or not, but I did have it forwarded to the Personnel Committee. I think we're gonna try to talk about that one in our next meeting, so. Okay, so there, that's the background on that, it's just, there's just a lot more to the job than I think a lot of people realize. Sure. So instead of asking for the full original amount of $28 an hour, I was asking for $25 an hour, so we'll meet you halfway. Very generous. <laughs> um, I have a quick question. Uh, thank you for, uh, again, for all, all of these amazing, this, this is a really great breakdown of the, the duties you have. As far as Patriot and the repeated attempts to, to bill for services that they didn't render, are there any, are there alternate uh, like suppliers that we've, con have we considered? Well, we do, we have this yeah. Bishop and Associates so, now. Right. So it's a little confusing because Patriot owns our software, which right. is Assess Pro, but they also had a valuation <laughs> portion so we've gotten rid of the valuation portion because they were not performing yeah. like they should. And the way I got this Bishop and Associates contact was I actually called our representative, Ryan Johnson, at the Department of Revenue. I said, I'm not happy with their performance. They're not doing the job. They're not, um, you know, I have to fight with them to come and I got them to reduce. So he said, well, let me get you in touch with this Roy Bishop and he can, you can send him an, um, proposal and then we'll see what kind of bid he comes back with. Well, his bid was so incredibly lower and, um, and he's doing a better job because he's local. The Patriot is in Marblehead. They don't really have anybody close. And when they put a bid in, they actually went up on their bid. Even after I complained about them not doing the work, they were asking 22000 a year because the Waters District pays 30% and the town pays 70%. They went up to 24000 a year. So I said, to me, it's clear their motives here. They don't really want the contract, but they'll jack up the price, and if we're willing to pay, well, they'll, they'll come and do a so-so job. If we're willing to pay, well, we weren't willing to pay because we weren't getting the services, and it was outrageous. But we still need, f for the recurring 500, we're still needing that to have the interface, the code, the Patriot code interface with the... Well, the $800 is to Patriot for writing the code once. Yeah. That's a one-time fee. The $500 would go to Point Software, 
which is the people that own the permitting software, which we already use point software in the treasurer collector's office. So we already were with that vendor. Okay. This is just a different program. Thank you. Questions, finance, other than that, Elliot? No? David? Tom? No, I think I got mine answered. And, and, and to me, I, I would just think that we try, I, I agree with you about, you know, you get somebody from Marblehead. Well, if you've ever been in Marblehead Harbor, there's about $3 billion worth of boats in Marblehead <laughs> Harbor. So I don't, there's no, there's nothing that brings them out except to collect the paycheck. And so mm -hmm. I, I would just continue to try to get the best, I mean, you knew how, try to get the best price you can. And, and because some of this, of what we're mandated to do, um, it's hard to get a part-time board unless the part-time board wants to start going to, to houses and right. I just don't, I don't think that that's, we're, we're gonna end up paying a lot more than what we're paying right now for assessing service. Mm -hmm. put it that way. I'm all set, Mr. Chair, thank you. Okay, is that sir? So we know the, the personnel committee is going to get back with respect to both the review of the job description, but also a collection of requests that I'm sure are going to be coming forward through the budget process. So, so this is your chance to shine as assessors. You just want to talk about taxes or tax bills or warn the public about anything fun, keeping well, an eye on Mary Ann. Mr. <laughs> I, I actually have a question for the assessors. I, I was at a meeting last Thursday and an assessor from another town was talking about the, the way they're assessing the state tells us to assess um, excise tax. Have you heard anything about that? For equipment? Heather, have you heard anything? Um, I, I don't, I don't think, I don't, and, and before for excise tax bills, we used to round off to the nearest $50. They're changing that. They, right. They're changing that now to the so your excise taxes may be going up or they may be going down because now the state is saying they want us to, instead of rounding up to the nearest 50, they want exact things. So, so if your car is valued at $13,283, before it would have been rounded up to, now they want the $13,283 exactly. So your bills may be going up or they may be going down, but it's the way the state the state's telling us to do that, so. It's all generated through Jeffrey and Jeffrey. Yeah. And then we, I, I, I don't know if they did the same thing to you with personal property tax. No, that's if, totally different. Did, so they didn't tell you to come no, up no, with no. a different, no. just on the excise The only tax. thing in personal property is, um, well one, there's a whole new thing with the utilities, gas and electric. Yeah. They've come up with an alternative form that they want the utilities to submit electronically. And this year it's um, optional. So I sent out a paper form and I also sent a letter with the link to, because the, they will be filling out this form and it's in an Excel format because it's, it's kind of complicated, but it's all about this net metering and it's, yeah. Yep. So anyway, um, this year it's optional, next year it's mandatory. And, and I also changed. heard, I also was talking to someone that's in court with a private solar farm and they're talking about the way, the way that the, the courts are telling to, to handle hmm. taxes and stuff. Oh, the pilots so that, and about, yeah, and that that's property, going back too. to prop, personal property. Yeah. So how it's valued and such. So it's kind of a fluid thing. It's changing all the time. I go to all these meetings and it's different every time. And so it's it's. So yeah. that that may be changing. That could and, be changing. And the other the other thing is is that we have a twenty seven million dollar apartment complex going in. Mm -hmm. um, and I just want to make sure that we they we start building them at the appropriate time. Well, yes. Yeah. So they will be. I already talked to uh, Roy Bishop. And I said that's our number one thing we want to get done first. It, they can't be valued at the full value for this fiscal year because it's what is their January first. That's everybody. That's how you're taxed by what's their January first. So if you if it's their January first, you can get billed for it. So it'll be a a portion, but still a portion of a large amount is still going to be good. 
And the thing that we noticed is that, uh, we all kind of noticed, is they've been sending out all these advertisements for renting. They're fully furnished. Yes. If they're fully furnished, they should be getting a personal property so, bill as right. well, which the other apartments are not. They're just getting a real estate. So it looks to me like they're fully furnished. They have like, what, 54 inch smart TVs yep. in every apartment. They, you know, all that stuff is taxable. So we're gonna get uh, Roy Bishop to get on that. He's pretty good with personal property. So that'll be something there that we've not had before. Okay. And, 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 and we know that they could that they can, you can either look at the, uh, the money they make off from that or the value that you guys assess to the property. So there's two different ways that you can look at what their, their, their bills are, so. And well, yeah, it would be an income-based. Income approach. Income yeah. approach. And you can do both. Any large, yeah. And, and again, just so people that may be watching, if they're, right. and these are conversations that we've had with the assessors all along, but I just want other people to know that Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thanks so much, assessors. We appreciate it. Thank you. And we'll be in touch. So let's move on to town clerk. Town clerk? Look at shifty eyes. <laughs> There's trouble. Hi, Town Clerk. How are you tonight? Good. How's the uh, early voting going? And can people actually come in and vote? Um, right now we're absentee voting. Absentee um, voting. Early voting is February, the week of February 24th. Got it. So we'll be adding 8 to noon on Friday. Yeah. Super. Thanks so much. Um, my budget is pretty much the same, but there are there is one big change in the Town Clerk, a new line item that I put in longevity, um, much to what Teresa was saying with the wage study that was done. Um, last year they brought everybody up to minimum and then um, when we did our budgets, personnel hadn't decided what they were gonna do. I think we're still talking about it, but I don't think that they're talking about doing the full amount. I did put in the full amount. Um, and I don't know if anybody has any questions about that. So, so when you look at the, the one thing, when you, when you look at your budget, mm -hmm. you, you're not putting in for the extra hours that you, that you spend when you do an election, right? No. So, so your your salary when it says your salary of X amount of dollars is it really your salary? But you're not you're not looking at the total hours that you spend in the job. So, so in in case so when you have the the election, that's a 14 hour day plus could be right. Could usually because elections start what at seven yeah. federal. You're usually here at five, six o'clock in the morning, yeah, then, and then you stay to nine or 10 at night when all the votes are counted. Yeah. So you're not putting those hours in. When we have a local election, those hours aren't in. When you have to be here on the last day to register because we're not typically open on Friday, you're coming back and having to do Friday hours as well, correct? Um, yeah, or depending on what, like the state ones I do, um, we do senior work off for the yeah. annual. Yeah, so I get paid to do the job. It's essentially so like it's a salaried really, position. Yeah, it's sense. not really an hourly right. kind of job, but I guess for the purpose of, of <clears> this, <throat> um, it goes to my office hours, not per se. Those are for your office well, hours, but not for your total of your job. Right. Okay. And I had just, I, I went to the highest amount in the, in the wage thing. Um, because I think it was supposed to be based on years worked. Yeah, for the like, like we look at the people who have been right. here ten years or more in the current position, and because so, that's an elected position, it's been kind of left out of all the past stuff. 
Well, yeah, I, I try to go with everyone else, um, but I'm kind of winging it on my own um, this time. Okay, and the elections is up due to extra elections. I mean, that's it's charged by elections. How's the uh, transition over to? The library. We'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> I I think it's it's going to work for all the reasons why we needed to move. It's tight though. It's you know we don't have the space that we did, and it's doable. I I just have already started getting nightmares because I just <laughs> had a dream that the checkout was in the stacks of books. <laughs> um, yeah. It's just smaller. It's, it's you tiny. know, but I. It, I think very, very doable. Should have high school. But we'll find out. Yeah. Don't you get a couple under your belt? Yeah. We, yeah, we have three before the presidential, and that's yeah. the worst. But hopefully early voting will offset some of the actual voters going. Will, to, that, so. will that be like in the community room set up? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you actually walk in to the library by where the um, pocket door is check-in table will be on the tile in the library. So we're, we're going to take up a little bit of space there. But they've been great. Catherine's been great. And has it been the case in the past, you know, next year no election, that line drops back off and you kind of see that noise, you know, every couple of years. Beyond that, the rest of this is a salary-driven increase. What's that, Mr. Chair? Easy enough. We'll be talking. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. you, Tom Clark. Have a great night. You also. And again, people can absentee ballot now, and they can early ballot February 24? That week of, yes. Yeah. February so 24. The 24th is 8 to 6. Tuesday and Wednesday are 8 to 4, and Thursday and Friday are 8 to 10. Thank you. Okay. And talk to treasure collector. Okay. Crushing the numbers, making things I'm happen. I'm trying, I'm trying. <laughs> okay. What would you guys like to know? Ask away. <laughs> <laughs> wow. The only so much an existential opportunity right there. <laughs> <laughs> I try to keep things level uh -huh. budget. Yep. Um, of course, the. Um, the area that is kind of iffy is the health insurance. Right. Um, but other than that, the Medicare, mm -hmm. that as well. Are there, we, we've recently, we've recently uh, uh, bonded for a big truck. Yeah. Any, any addition, and there's no, uh, at this point, any debts that we're looking to incur at this point in the budget process. Uh, so bonding would be just that one piece from the current year. Mm -hmm. And is it a line that we carry a value in and use if we need to, or is it a line that we go by project? Or I think by, by project. By issuance. Yeah. 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 And we've included the opportunity for um, some growth in health insurance by potential enrollment increase. Yep, okay. I did. I did factor in maybe two family plans. Okay. That's that makes easy. Sense. Yep. And accounts current contribution is by percentage to health insurance. Yep. What is it? Sixty. Nice. And what if we wanted to go to sixty-five? Um, we could. <coughs> I didn't. I just I understand. But okay. That would be a matter of running some numbers yep. and coming back as, as we get farther down the budget process. Yep, absolutely. Great. Yep, I can do that. How's how's the other kind of ancillary things that are the workers' comp as our payroll grows or doesn't grow and etc. Yeah, workers' comp I think is 
Um, actually, soon you might. That's yeah. coming up. It is going up. That, that's, that's what I expected to go up by about ten thousand dollars. Is what I was told when I met with Maya. Yeah. Mm. Yep. So it's always. I think they just did eighteen and nineteen. Mm -hmm. So yeah. this. Um, the tax title line. I don't know if that should be an article or if it should be budgeted in. Is it volatile year to year? What's that? Is it volatile year to year? Yeah. This year, um, I know it's going to be, I have two properties that are very close. Right. Um, which would be good. Um, but yeah, it, it does fluctuate. Hmm. Well, we should talk about that from a, with the town administrator about sure, budget yeah. lines. Mm -hmm. If it's that kind of volatile, it isn't something that should be a warrant article. I wouldn't think that would be that would be argued out too much over town mm -hmm. meeting floor, but it's big state. Yeah. It's something that probably needs to be insurance. How's our debt? It's in there. Uh, Toward the end. We're getting there, actually. We've got you're getting close to a couple of things, right? Yeah. 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 So yeah. Li one. library should be mm -hmm. one more, right? Yep. Title. So 6121 is the library's last payment? Yep. And the public safety complex's last payment? Yep. Mm -hmm. We just did our last payment for Title Five, mm -hmm. And then we've got one more payment for the sewer. Yeah, and again, the sewer is paid for by the user, and that's, yep. that's fine. When you think about that, Essentially, we're talking about the 2021 budget and calendar year 2021, which is essentially a year from, it's a year from June, public safety and library come off the books. Mm -hmm. uh, does this include the bond offering for the fire truck? No. Because that will not be in the current. In next year, right? Yeah. Right. Got it. It's awful nice they'd build us a truck like that, Tom. And yeah. the, the, <laughs> bank, the bank pays them half a million dollars plus, and then they pay the bank a year later. It's kind of nice. It's kind of nice, <laughs> right? It's nice it's and a good rate. <laughs> and, and a good rate, exactly. That was, still that, pays was, that was a super yeah. move on their part. Yeah. I heard the fire truck may be here in like a month. So they say. So they say. Yeah. It's still, it's still the wrong color with the wrong name on the side. I, I heard it's coming through orange. Oh, there you go. <laughs> the new on trend color. The new high biz. Yeah. How's uh, Harper's working out for us? That's for a couple of years into that payroll yep. service right now, and I I think they're great. I think they they're they're extremely helpful to me. Um, yeah, I can't rave enough about them. I think they're they're excellent. That's the only questions I have. Any finance committee? And jump out. You can always yell at me another time. Let's <laughs> <laughs> come back in. Yeah. Uh, under OPEP, we have expended. Is that the management fee? Yeah, that's what we spend every year. Yep. 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 I just think it's nice to know that we've borrowed wisely within our means, are able to pay for it, and we're able to. Knock these out. It's, yep. it's a good thing. And there's something to be said about uh, timing of retiring debt while incurring more debt. Right? You want to have that kind of stability in, in the in the process. I forget if it was Framingham or you know, Andover. Uh, the, the direct budget director of the town of Andover, city of Andover, was talking about how they have a separate line, separate, completely separate debt budget and they want to make sure that that stays flat all the time mm -hmm. because you're going to be retiring equipment, bringing on equipment, bonding for construction, et cetera, et cetera. But they don't want that line to move up or down. And it's really methodical approach to it. And I, I think it's just brilliant. Yeah. Any questions for treasurer collector? Heather, what, what do you think the most, um, being the job now for you, what do you think the most eye-opening aspect of the job for you? 
Oh boy. <laughs> it's a second interview. Yeah, I know. Yeah. You tell him get nervous. No, I, no, no I, well, for me, it, it's, it's about, it's about how, and, and how do you overcome those, those bumps or things that you didn't see, and about ma making sure that you have the necessary support mm -hmm. if you need it. I, because, I mean, you, I mean, you know, for the most part, most of our, in, in, in our new town administrator, it's probably good for him to hear. I mean, so Heather's a new employee, and and personally, there's 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 a couple of jobs I don't I don't think that you're really trained for. There, there's no way to train. Mm -hmm. Elector treasurer is one, mm -hmm. and it's hard to re realize a few years ago there were elected positions. Right. And the other is the, is the accountant, and I think both jobs are very difficult because of the way we do business. So. Yeah, I mean, there's there's a ton of stuff that comes across my desk, and I just I try to take things as a priority, decide which one's a priority, and deal with that task, and then keep you know move on. Um, as far as you know, I'm trying to think what would be most difficult. I'm trying to help you out. I'm <laughs> um, I don't know. I think it's just a number of, just a number of the different things with the um, retirement boards. Um, that can throw you for a loop because that's something different. Seems like um, the reporting, coding, stuff like that for for that. Um, but other than that, I just keep plugging away and get my job done, get all the work done. Yeah, in 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 a lot of lot of people that don't see the day to day workings of the town, don't understand is that um, or, or don't realize that treasurer collector has a position, um, but they they have a box that they have to stay in, and then you have an accountant, and and in some time, and, it, and it's funny when you listen when you listen to people that have been in the municipal world for a while. They talk about, uh, I don't think an accountant, I don't think a treasurer collector would ever let their checks go out like that, you know. And, and there's just certain things that we would find in business. You would say, well, that's that's a standard thing, but not in the municipal world. Right. And it's and it's hard. It's it's hard finding the right the right people, the right training, the right staffing yep. the, fi the financial well-being of the town it's really back to a couple two three people yeah. there's always yeah. something new which is great it's good, good point. i have no problem with that thank There's you Heather. but i work well with the accountant and mm -hmm. we seem to balance very well and when if there's an issue we settle it deal with it good so yeah. whoever's louder right whoever's just yeah. comes down harder <laughs> <laughs> I circle back one one question yeah. to health insurance. What was the percentage increase this year on the premiums from Maya? Ooh, good question. Oh, um, actually, I don't have that yet. Okay. There was a so um, there's a big range. Right. They go like from a negative to eight okay. percent. So I I met them halfway. Yep. That's what I. I tried to do because I don't have I don't have them yet. They okay. said they probably give them to me by the end of February, uh -huh. so I can get back to you guys. So we actually may see an increase in this by percentage, right? By possibly, yeah. Possibly. It'd be okay. nice if it was a I, decrease. I, I think Scott, at the we did the FERCOG budget the other day. Mm -hmm. I think they said Hampshire was a zero. Yep. Yeah. Hampshire was a zero. I think. Yep. Could be. Okay. Yep. We we'll just have to keep. Yeah. Keep that on our radar as well. Yep, as soon as I get them, I can get them right to you guys. Great. Thanks so very much. Appreciate it. Thank you, Heather. Thanks. Thanks. Keep doing a great job. <clears throat> Am I free to go? Are you good? Yeah. Yeah. No more questions. <laughs> We're ready to roll. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks so much. Thanks. Thanks. Okay, Kamish, what do you think? All right. Mine's probably a little overwhelming, though, huh? Is it? You didn't look at the second page. Yes. Back, um, you know, back when I was hired, Sherry had said we could you know, discuss the budget, comparing it to other communities and all. Yeah. So um, I, I based a lot on Hadley and West Hampton. Sure. Um, Hadley's, um, after they have an application in field, I have a very good shot at. Mm -hmm. um, kind of get off the subject a little bit. They're going to be um, talking to the administrator as an option of 
merging and actually sure, hiring a yes. commissioner and a local yep, yep. Um, as one option somewhere down the line if you were interested. Okay. Um, and so basing it on their compensation per hour um, and West Hampton's you know, budget as far as a stipend for travel, things like that, yeah. as just being, you know, doing this as a, a part-time position, yep. 15 hours, is kind of how I based the, you know, the proposed budget. And I did throw in after speaking with, um, especially the electoral inspector, it's a, kind of a win-win for everybody. If you have a, a slow year or a real busy year with the economy, um, the option two would be paid by the permit. Mm -hmm. You know, percentage of the permits like they do it. A side question: Does the historic commission have any of those uh, 300th anniversary mugs left? Because mine uh, took a nosedive off of my desk. <laughs> yeah, what's that? The uh, the 300th anniversary historic mug. Oh, it's a building. Yeah, yeah. Completely. <laughs> I apologize. That's okay. <laughs> but in case you want to get rid of your mug, he's interested. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> Basically, the you know when I started um, in July with the position, it was based on 28 an hour for 15 hours, and Hadley right now is advertised at 41, an example, you know 40 hours. But um, and the alternate, you know, locals are 38, and that's it's just a, such a big spread, and that's why it's very probably very overwhelming. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Those numbers again. Uh, Forty-one is uh, is what Hadley is advertised at. Forty-one. Yes. Okay. For Forty hours. Yes. And you still want to? And I mean the average the, the um my alternates you know if I'm away get is thirty-eight so they're actually you know close to ten you know ten dollars more an hour. And you work for 15 hours a week? Yes. And Fire Chief and I plan on, um, like the school has, was, hasn't been inspected in years, we, we take care of that, but the apartments and all, we have an agenda to start, you know, doing, catching up with all the apartments, which are required annual inspection, called a 110 inspection, and, and um, basically, I don't know if they've ever been done. So it's gonna be a lot of work, you know, we're going to, we plan on doing it together and, um, you know, trying to get everything up to code and be working on that in the near future. Just a uh, side question. On, on those inspections for city apartments, if you found um, <coughs> problems, how does the town make money on that? Does the town make money on that or is that just to fix the problems for safety's sake? Um, you catch, you know, lights that aren't, um, egresses that are blocked, you know, railings, doors that need repair. Um, there's a whole list and we both have different things that we're, we're looking at. Okay, so there's no financial incentive for the town to do the, except for doing it because we have to do it. There is a fee. There is a fee for the inspection. Yes. Yeah, and it's based on units and um, both of us will be, we would receive a fee when, when those are done. Yes. Yes. Uh, the three, what they call 304, the liquor licenses, um, there's a, an annual fee of $100, which you've received to do those as well. Um, of course, school, things like that are no charge. Thank you. So did you see the wage survey that, that was done? It says here, this is the survey summary, the town clerk had it attached to hers. Billion inspectors is actually one of the categories in there. 
in building inspector, we're, we're at time of survey, 2733, average minimum 2863, then you go over to uh, average max 3306, and median is 3108, those are hourly rates. Uh, we show a difference of Sunderland being off by about 30 to be at the, at, the, at the base or the means. And I'm wondering, I can't glean what it is you're actually asking for in your proposal. I saw, I see the notes. I actually just, I, I you did. Want to get to, you want to get to 38. You're proposing 38. Yes, yeah, that was the proposal. Got it. Okay, now it makes some sense. How long ago, I, I did not see that study, but how long ago was that done? Two years, David? Um, last year. Last, last year. year. Last year. Last year. Last year. Uh, yeah, last year. And these were comp towns that were agreed to, both with the, the nice folks uh, and uh, our town administrator at the time. So I had to see what those towns are, but there's size, hours, population, etc. We'll make sure you get one. Okay, thank you. No worries. It, it's helpful uh, the ask and then what the research actually you know said because the goal was to get everybody toward toward those to, toward those meetings. That that that's important, that's important, important for us. Right. right. Yeah. Okay. Right. We're, we're shooting for that right. mid right. mid section of the cost. Yes. Okay. The questions. Yeah. Building inspector expenses. Yeah. Pretty straightforward. Yeah. 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 It's a fee for service in that sense. Right. So. right. Well, it's not actually. It's not a fee for service. Technically not, but it, it's never because it's never been a self. It's never been fully funded. Yeah. Huh? yeah, it's never been funded off completely by permits. Right. Yeah, because because building inspector does think, use building commissioner does the things commish. differently than, and and that would include um, zoning enforcement yeah. officer called in on a. On an issue like if a house burned and they have to have to, to determine if it can be occupants, so there's a, so it's not it's not really by fee. And actually, I was talking to the electrical inspector the other day, and he thinks that we really should look at how the because electrical and plumbing are purely fee by schedules. Right. Um, and so he, he wants to add a couple thoughts about how how they're they reimburse a town. Right now it's it's fifteen dollars for a, a permit. Um, and they are suggesting instead of the fifteen dollars it should be fifteen percent. And so of the project cost? For the electrical of, of the, so if they have a, a hundred dollar, if they if they have a hundred dollar permit, yep. they would give fifteen dollars back to the town for the. But yeah, if there's a ten dollar permit, and just use simple math, would be they give a buck and a half would come back instead of the because mm -hmm. at some time you you can't you have a thirty dollar fee fifteen. <laughs> 15% or $50 is half the fee. Yeah. So, <coughs> so he wants to bring that, that forward also. But I, I, would, I would say, you know, I, I would think, Mr. Chair mm -hmm. and Finance Committee, you know, inside there we're looking at the cost for the code books and, and such. I think instead of those, they should be like more like one time because you're not necessarily replacing a code book. Well, yeah, now that they're now is. they're in the international ITC, blah 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 blah. Now, so um, so maybe maybe there should be a one-time cost. Fair. You know what I mean? And I, but I don't know where to put that because mm. you just wouldn't want to put twelve hundred dollars and then next year have again twelve hundred dollar expense line item and you're not replacing your code books next right. year. Are these real books or are these just uh, it's subscriptions on the net? Yeah. They're they're books. You you they're they're actually about this fat, Francis. In this day and age, um, you yeah. have to as, as a construction supervisor or a building uh, commissioner, you have they're, you're required to get those books. Yes, they're they're you're required. Yes, and they, they should be in the office, and it's it's every six years. We skip. We do a instead of the three year cycle. State of Massachusetts with the mass amendments at all is usually every six years at least. So 
it's not the 1200 um, yeah. I was thinking when I first did the budget in, in um, West Hampton, I thought it was going to be more like 1000 but after one of my trainings, talking to other commissioners, it's closer to $1,200, realistically, to get to have all of them. And that's not, um, you know, having it on the computer or anything. I mean, you can get it online and all that, then you're talking phenomenal amounts and way above a small town, you know. They, they, Francis, they make you get the... Uh the the residential code they make you get the uh, um, building codes for uh, commercial buildings they make you get the um, you're probably gonna have OSHA you're probably have OSHA 19 19s right the, the OSHA yeah, the, regs the IFC um, there's gonna be the uh, energy swimming components. pools spas there's the uh, existing construction um, mass amendments they don't come free They're, those are a lot less expensive, but you have to pay for the mass amendments as well. <clears throat> so you said the the physical books are cheaper than an online version. You said yes. Yeah, any town I've worked, it's only the state inspectors that I see have that all online. Where trainings, right? You got to get to a big community that has. I believe Greenfield does have it now. <clears throat> Power permits. I'm sorry, how are permits? Good, I was gonna uh, give a, just the revenue from, um, if we take out the sugar bush, yep. <laughs> which was the big permit, yep. which was, was actually deposited December 31st of 18. Mm -hmm. So if we took that out, um, there was 114 permits in 2018, revenue at 17.9. Nice. And I came up, and don't hold me to, I'll just throw out, it's gonna be over 32,000 this year. So not double, but close, and 139 uh, permits. And we took the new fees in uh, July 1st. So um, it had been quite a while since those were renewed, and the, and the minimum is 75, sure. which is reasonable for the town to, you know, to collect for the time it takes for the average permit. Well, there's a lot going on, Kamish. I appreciate that. Just. Uh, Apologize for my confusion earlier, but as far as the the permit fees, you have one of the proposals, like option two. You have what would you give then as an estimate of what that would come up to, more or less, of eighty five percent. If you're if you were going to take a guess, so it would be the just say it was thirty thousand. It'd be eighty five percent of the you okay. know thirty. And the average is, you know, 75 is not the average, is the minimum. So the town would, you know, be getting 15%. Um, it's, it's based, I, I believe, building, I, well, I know, back in Southampton 10 years ago, the, that's how it was, was done. Um, I believe it was 80-20. And right now, Southampton, the electrical and plumbing, they kept it at 80-20. Um, they get 40 per inspection, and the town gets 20. Finance committee, what do you think? So, what was the hourly that the survey found last year? So, the survey had the building inspector Sunderland's rate at the time of the survey is 2733. Uh, average minimum was 2863. Uh, median minimum was 30. And that puts us at a dollar 30 deficit. I mean, of under, under. At the time. Yeah. And then the median 267 under. And then they went average maximum was 3306. Uh, and that put us, you know, we we're $5 under. And then medium maximum was 3108. And that puts us 375 an hour under. Thanks. Appreciate it. Thank you. Have a great night. Thank you. Thanks. Right. Thank you. Thanks. Have a good night. Hey Liz, Thank you, Tom. you here to talk about Council on Aging or are you just here to visit? I do like it. Sure, fire away, Council on Aging, the Chief can wait. <laughs> wow. Well, <laughs> well, I'd be careful driving home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah I definitely. Oh. We'll, keep, we'll, we'll make sure he's, he's, he yeah. can keep him here for a while. Although I heard he does have a radio. Right, they still go. 
Go ahead. It's so nice uh, to see you. I'm uh, just eager to let the community know that uh, we have repopulated the Council on Aging in Sunderland. We're in the process of doing that, and we're pretty excited about it. We have our first public meeting on February 11th at 10 o'clock in the morning here at the Town Hall. So uh, anyone is welcome to come and give us their suggestions, ideas, complaints, whatever, and uh, we'll see what we can do with it. <laughs> It's very exciting, and I think it's it, it eventually will work its way into a really great resource for the town. That's fabulous. So we and I'll be back again before you let <coughs> probably remind people again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's Friday. What date again, Liz? Uh, it's uh, February 11th. I think it's a Wednesday. Two eleven. Yeah, the 11th. Okay. at ten o'clock. At ten o'clock. We get that on the website too. Why not? We'll leave, we'll leave that on. We'll get that on it's TV. Posted on the website. Yeah. Great. When the meetings get posted, they go on the website. It's yeah. not a posting place, but that's where they get them. Brilliant. We're also hoping to get some, um, just some you know, basic uh, word posters hung, yeah. hung up around town to help with it. Excellent. Thanks so much for this. Tuesday. Oh, thank you. Tuesday, the 11th. Sorry. Okay. Chief? You want to talk? Cruisers, Humvees, <laughs> helicopters, <No>. drones, <laughs> laser pointers, laser well, maybe laser pointers, assault laser pointers. tanks, probably. You you read the memo. It's yeah. Assault tanks. <laughs> how was everybody? Good. How are you tonight? Always good. Glad to have you. All right. <clears throat> so I bought color graphics this time because oh, nice. Black nice. Uh, do you want me to just go over beginning with the capital improvement request, or do you want me to go right into the budget? Uh, let's start with expense and we'll hold capital for a second. This right here keeps us all honest. Let's start with the budget. Sounds good. Okay, so I uh, submitted two budget requests, one showing uh, without COLA. So just uh, the only existing contract come July 1 would be mine. The patrolman's contract is still uh, yeah. in, in the uh, infancy, so we have to renew that. We'll get started on that now that Jeff's here. Sure. Uh, and then the other one I, s I sub submitted was with a cold. Uh, I did that based on the, uh, I believe the same graphics that we had from this past year was a 3%. So I, I drafted them both up that, uh, up this way so that it, it showed both of the, uh, the percentage increases, one with and one without. Um, so we want to dip into it. They basically are, are the same except for the, uh, the 3% um, average. So when you look at the um, let's start, let's say, the without COLA, um, if you want to start with uh, that one. Mm -hmm. The uh, expense uh, line. So I was going through it, and I remember we had a question last year. Uh, I was about $1,000 off, and we, I, we, uh, I realized that it was because between the budget hearing and the town meeting, they had to remove $1,000 from different accounts to try to balance the budget. And that came out of the expense line, and I never updated the sheet. So when I did my figures for the following year, it seemed like I was a thousand higher, and that's why. So we figured that out again this time that there was nine hundred, uh, just under, just over nine hundred dollars taken out. So that's why that line is forty-five six initially for twenty twenty, and not what I thought was forty-six five. Got it. So, all right. So that uh, expense line shows uh, an increase to the fuel line. Um, the fuel, we've been averaging um, a little bit more than we were used to, but we also, uh, as part of, a, between a whole uh, bunch of different reasons, from the uh, uh, patrol usage to the details uh, for cruisers being used on details, the positive to that, excuse me, is the, uh, the, the contractors, the majority of the contractors are paying uh, cruiser fees. So that's coming back to the town. Uh, to give you an idea, in 2018, or FY18, I think we billed uh, between four and 6,000 just in cruiser fees. Uh, we've already done that for the last six months. So even though we're using the fuel and using the vehicles uh, more, uh, at this rate, we're going to be pulling in probably, or getting from the vendors, uh, double what we got back uh, the year before. Um, but again, you know, my budget is 12.5 for fuel, and the way it's going, we want to make sure that we have enough for the following year. Uh, one little thing about uh, numbers that are a little bit off. I know we had a contract with the fuel company that showed, I want to say, around 230. Uh, but we keep getting billed at 274. 
-hmm. So I'm trying to work with um, so the company and the accountant to find out why we're still being billed at 45 cents higher than what the contract said. I okay. mm -hmm. um, just want to, you know, button that up because yep. uh, just in the last seven months we've we spent about thirteen hundred dollars more in fuel than I thought we should have. Right, right. Um, and just but, purchase price, not volume. Uh, no, the, the actual price yeah, per gallon instead price, of yeah. two twenty nine, it's two seventy four. So it's, it's a little bit off. So we want to make sure we, we button that up soon mm -hmm. and have an idea. Um, as far as the wages go on the without cola, um, uh, the same thing I brought to you last year uh, with uh, the color graphics. If you remember, mm -hmm. I had the designs yeah. to show you the differences between 2014 to 2018. Uh, well, then we also did the 2017 to 2018. So I made some other copies for you. We can pass out. Um, in this one, 2017, you'll see 2017 to 2018 and then 2018 to 2019. So the first setup is 2017 versus 2018. Uh, you'll see on this one is time of day, it's got the spike, and then this one is day of week. Yep. Yep. And then the other one is 2018 versus 2019. Uh, so as, as great of a spike that we saw in 2017 to 2018 for let's say the day of the week, we saw that there was a huge increase and we commented about how Wednesdays were a low day and, and all that. And, and I explained to you, a lot of the reason why that gap was there was because of the way we reported the calls that were coming in. We have the regional dispatch center uh, with uh, the other uh, 20 plus towns in uh, Shelburne Control. Uh, and we went away from the other reporting of the paper logs that we used to have. We got away from that because it just wasn't as clear cut as a dispatch log. Plus, you would have a, a larger database that you'd be able to use for pool of resources. See if the, the town of Gill used uh, or dealt, dealt with somebody or dealt with a car uh, or dealt with a suspect for the town of Sunderland, Leverett, things like that. And it, it all built into that database. Uh, and we explained, I explained to you that the, the, the reason why that massive increase was there, or a good majority of that reason, was because we're, we're finally reporting the calls the way we should be. Um, I did tell you that we'll probably see an increase in 2019, and you'll see that there was an increase in 2019. The only difference is the color is different, so 2018 was green um, last time when I was here, and now 2018 is red. So that giant increase is now red, and that's now the increase for 2019. Wednesdays is still showing a remarkable drop. Wednesdays are very, uh, compared to all the other towns, are a slow day, mostly probably because a lot of people get paid on Thursdays and Fridays, um, or no one just wants to venture out on hump day. Uh, and this is every type of call that we have, from uh, motor vehicle violations to calls for service for uh, 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 an officer needed for a whole litany of different things, from domestics to something as simple as just asking questions about um, paperwork, you know, getting accident reports, things like that. Um, and then the other graphic is the time of call, time of day. So you see that the graphics show that the day shift and evening shift are uh, usually busier than the midnight shift, or at least the last three hours of the midnight shift. Um, as, as I'm sure all of you were told by your parents, like I was by mine, nothing good happens after midnight, um, and that's usually been the case no matter where you go. So uh, these are just, just graphics just to show you um, that we do have uh, uh, the calls of services that we thought we had, and then um, they're, they're generated by the dispatch center uh, or the calls being entered into the dispatch center. And like I said, that's either through uh, self-initiated calls by the police officers, walk-ins to the station, phone calls to our station, or phone calls to uh, dispatch out in shovel control. Um, just to kind of clarify it, <coughs> So these, these are annualized, right? This is annualized. Yeah, that, that's the averages for the year. Got it. Thank so you. that time of the day, every day put together, and that's that day of the year. That's the picture. Got it. Yep. Um, just to give an idea, so the, uh, the incident reports went from 136 in 2018 to uh, 187 in 2019. Uh, motor vehicle stops doubled from almost uh, 560 to over 1,300. Um, the results kind of changed a little bit. Uh, you know, back last year I told you that 2018 showed you about a 45% written result, whether they be a written warning, criminal citation, or money citation. Um, 
this year, this past year, 2019, with uh, over 1,300 motor vehicle stops, that generated about 480, which is almost a 40% uh, written, uh, but 40% of 1,300 of money sites is far more than the 45% of the money sites we wrote the year before. Um, accidents, we have a lot of accidents. Um, not all of them are reported to us. A lot of times people will just deal with it on the side of the road. Uh, police involvement last year was about 50, 51. I'm sorry, two years ago. Last year we had 58. Um, I know that there were more uh, that weren't reported, but you know you can't make people report accidents. It's just suggested. Uh, <clears throat> 2018, I think we had 68 or 69 arrests, and that includes criminal summonses to in custody. Last year we had 110, so that went up a little bit as well. Um, so that just shows you kind of a, a, the reasons why we had those increases um, for the report-wise. But uh, as far as calls for service, like I said, they go from uh, the, the building checks, the, the business checks, to motor vehicle stops, to citizens uh, dealing with citizens, uh, me doing traffic at the schools usually every morning, uh, and then the other more egregious calls like, you know, um, arguments and fights and things like that. So I show you that, go ahead. Are all the surrounding towns having this kind of uh, like a general increase in the amount of calls and incidents? I don't know about the, well, as far as the, the, the graphics I showed you last year, that massive increase, I don't, I can't yeah, say why, you know, if they showed the same increase. I know why we did it. We went from a paper log to a, a other setup. But mainly for the other case? Last year, 2018 to 19. I didn't check with them. I, I, really, I really don't know if they're showing an increase. I, I can hear them on the radio. I know a lot of towns are busier. Um, and, and a lot of certain crimes are becoming more prevalent um, that, that a lot of the officers are dealing with. Uh, but as far as do they have an increase, that I'm not sure of. What kind of crimes are we talking about? Mm -hmm. we, see, we have seen uh, this past year, we saw a uh, rather large uptick in uh, operating under the influence. Drunk driving or drug driving. That's um, interesting. Yeah, uh, especially for a small town. Mm -hmm. We, uh, one, more than at one time, I think two or three times, I've gone to court on a Monday morning uh, with a couple in my hand to drop off Monday morning. Um, at one point, I was in line. Uh, Franklin County was just a busy week, and Greenfield had 28 arrests, Deerfield had a bunch, we had four. It was just one of those days where, one of those weekends where it was just taken oh, over and away. It was something, you know, and, and I've been in this job long enough that I, I sometimes would blame it on the moon or, you know, the, Something's in the water, but something happened. Something changed right, where the, that specific weekend, especially, was busy. Um, but we've we've you know been dealing with uh, a, a larger increase in operating under the influence, uh, whether it be from alcohol or, or drug driving. Uh, we've seen an increase in disturbances, domestics, household family members, things of that nature. That has gone up. Um, and then we always have our staples, if you will. Um, Sunderland is a very small bucolic town, but the motor vehicle traffic is just, I mean, for a town this size. increase in, in the vehicular. Uh, yeah, a lot of our motor vehicle infractions, you know, unlicensed, unregistered, uninsured, um, things like that. Is, is the increase, have, like, can you target what accounts for that? Is it increased policing? Somewhat, or is it just a just an increase in volume? I would love to take the credit and say my officers are the reasons <laughs> why, uh, but that's not always the case. I mean, just a lot of increase. I'll be honest with you, we received a lot more civilian contact. Mm -hmm. They reached out to us. That whole chestnut, if you see something, say something, uh, and the public's been doing that tremendous. They they call us about every little thing, and that usually opens the door into something else. Um, there have been times where we have officers out doing specified uh, uh, traffic control during their shifts. We haven't had you know, grants or anything where we could put an officer on to just do four hours of this. You know, we, we, we don't have the budget for that. Right. Uh, but normal patrol calls for service, motor <clears throat> vehicle accidents, resulting some, some from that point from uh, a criminal charge or an investigation which then resulted in that. Uh, but a lot of times people calling on the phone. Hmm. This person's all over the road, things of that nature. Are these folks passing through when it comes to, to, the, to the vehicular issues, or are they mostly town, town people? Uh, no, most of it is, are the commuters or people driving through. I, I pulled up some of the numbers for some of the roadways, and you know, no surprise, Amherst Road is where most yeah. of the motor vehicle stops took yeah. place. Um, out of the uh, over 400 and something citations uh, that we had, uh, 
220 were on just Amherst Road. And as you know, that's three point something miles from the bridge to basically just past Bugs. Uh, a few things on Bridge Street. And then the next step, the next one's uh, North Main Street. Uh, that's another one uh, right out here. Uh, and then eventually Montague was third, or Montague was tied with Bridge Street for third. Um, but that's you know, 47 and 116. Busy that's the busiest sections that we have, and, and they're all coming right through the center of our town. Well, and one of the things we're, with the North Main Street project, one of the big things with us is trying to control speed as much yes. as we can in that project. Yes. It's challenging, but it, it can be. Yeah, I've, I've yeah. been meeting with a couple of people, usually be by the phone or, or whatnot, from different agencies trying to figure out the whole assessment for speed and, and go yeah. from there. Yeah. We need drones for speed. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not at that level that's yet. That's coming. Yeah. I'm not there yet. <laughs> that's um, coming, though. Uh, and again, you know, 116 being the busier road, um, most of the arrests or citations, I'm sorry, criminal arrests, so whether it be a criminal summons or uh, an actual physical arrest, uh, that Amherst Road is, is the biggest one. Um, we have three major apartment buildings on that road, uh, and the commuter traffic right. goes to that road. Lots of uh, so that explains for a majority of it. Uh, uh, but, uh, like I, I've been saying before, the officers have been tremendous. They're, they're out there, you know, on Falls Road, stopping cars and writing tickets. They're on North, uh, North Plain, uh, South Plain, uh, doing spot checks and traffic stops. Uh, Plumtree, uh, a lot of people on that as well. Plumtree's a, a so, big crossroad. Yeah, and a lot of times the officers will, will try to then change it up a little bit because we don't want the, the people to think that we're only policing 116. We're obviously out everywhere, wherever the, uh, the residents call us to, uh, and during their patrol. So, um, you know, that, that goes to show us that, that they are out there and they are making the stops. It's just sheer numbers, obviously, 116 is going to get most of it. We've had two correspondents to our office thanking for the... Um, Attention to plum tree and mm -hmm. those areas. Yep. So, Tom? so, 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 Chief, what would it take to put together a? And, and I've been thinking about it for for a couple of years now. Because and, and and we get we get a lot of um, concerns coming from from our residents about speed and, and, and we, we all see it. I don't, I think every one of us, would. what would it take for you to put together a budget for, let's say 20 hours a week, 20 hours a week to put someone on detail just for speed and then put it as a warrant article. So it wouldn't go to your budget. Yeah. Um, I think you, you you know what I'm trying to say. Yeah, I do. I I, I would, yeah. And, and, um, and that and 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 let the and, and again, it it wouldn't. Uh, it, it'd be money that's being spent in the police department, but it wouldn't be per se your department's thing. And it gets the people that are always concerned about speed allows them to really come out to town meeting and support or not that. Yeah, it's that control. that thought, and 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 so it's not necessarily it's not you asking for more money, but it's our residents in town asking for that hmm. that addition. I I think I mean if we while you were talking, I'm just trying to put some of the numbers together. Just based on the part time officer uh, pay, go for the hourly pay, uh, and put them on for twelve of those twenty, because you would assume that probably a full time or two would take them. But just at the part-time level for, 12, let's say, 12 hours a week for 52 weeks would be uh, 12500 That's just for part-time. And then if we would add on that's, the full-time pay. That, that to, and again, it, it, you know what I'm trying to say, Mr. Chair? It's, it's, not, it's not adding to the police budget, but it's, it's to get – and, and then it's a – Well, it's safety money. Right, yeah, it. that's a good way to look at it. Public say it's a separate item. But, but, it, may, item. but it may be, and, 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 hmm. and then all, and then, and then if we see how it works, and then it may help try to support hmm. um, something additional down the road. But I didn't justify that. Though. I mean, <clears throat> if, if safety is the issue, I mean, how really important is it that that we have to wait for a warrant, you know, to fund it? I mean, if it was that pressing. Point. I mean, 
just how um, mm -hmm. the devil's, devil's, devil's you know, advocate now. I think, this, I think Tom's trying to, what Tom's trying to say is it's a way to kill two birds with one stone. Bring people that. out to town meeting to talk about it and fund it at the same time. I get that. Okay. But I am the person who doesn't want to spend any money on anything, period. I don't care what. Mm -hmm. Well, If it's that important, why, I mean, why do we have to wait for? And if it fails, I mean, I mean does not mean that it wasn't that important anyway? So why, in that case, then why even bring it up? Oh, Francis, I, I think that's I I think that's a I think that's a wonderful discussion. That I think it's a wonderful discussion. I, I'm just I'm just for for me as a, as a slackman. All right, I I hear I go to Home Depot, and 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 and, and I'm not saying that my wife says that's my favorite store. I'm not saying that, but if I happen to be at Home Depot, I I would say. Uh, if I'm at Home Depot, probably once a month, someone would stop and talk to me about speed on on a road. Yeah. Um, you walk or bike down one of our streets, and people are talking about about a speed. At the same, so in in, well, I can watch the car go by my house, and I know mm -hmm. speed is a concern. Sure. But to to me. Um, I, I think when when you when you when you put a Warren article and, and this is hard hard to put in I'm, I'm I wasn't really ready to discuss it Francis so I'm 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 struggling for the uh, I get it I mean I'm just trying to sharpen you know to sharpen our argument you know right. when you, you right. present something like this we need to you know be ready for because folks in this town are very very, what's the word I'm looking for? Very, very particular about how their money is spent. I mean, you, would you like the word thrift? It's true. <laughs> no, I, no, I don't you know, so, I think, I mean, the word is not thrifty, actually. I think it's beyond that. It's People beyond. just want to spend their money, or want to be sure that money is being spent the right way, mm -hmm. and they want to, want to prove to them that they're spending the money, not just make it seem like you, you're doing it, but that you are really do, actually doing it. Oh, it's my accountability. Exactly. So my point yeah. is, if we're going to do something like this, we want to be able to come at it from all angles. Yeah, you know, absolutely. You know, look at you know, this thing from all angles to that. When we present it, whatever argument comes up, we're ready to handle it. Because if we suddenly look like well, we are... Accountability is built in because it's money specifically for speed, you know, for safety and speed control. Yeah, I well, think this is like a way to say, like, put your money where your mouth is. It's one thing to always complain about speeding in yeah, town, right, but this right. is going to be putting... Then let's take money and... Yeah, money putting a money right, amount right. on it. Okay. Like, is it worth this much to you to stop right. speeding? Okay. Right. right. In that case, then, are we ready to be, to quantify this going forward? That is, mm -hmm. you know, how much speeding do we have now? And how will this, how much, how will this right. money yeah. spent reduce oh, that? A lot. Okay. Oh, I think okay. A lot. I mean, Bill, that's coming from you. A lot. I agree. But you have to give me numbers that tells me that well, it's coming down I a lot. I can sit in front of my house on South Main and, and with a radar gun. And, and I mean, if you want us to do that, <laughs> well, but you know, that's, that's part of what's coming up. So yeah. that's uh, every other call. Wednesday, Wednesday or Thursday, I think we're actually receiving two of the solar panels that uh, the board purchased through. I somewhere. Oh, the signs. Um, the solar signs, kind of what yeah, we saw nice. in Deerfield. So those are going to be received this week, uh, I believe, and then we're going to start rolling them out into some of the places that we receive the complaints for. And what I believe that we ordered were the same, uh, sim similar ones that Deerfield had. We yeah. could then extrapolate numbers from that. Right, they take stats. 150 yeah. cars, doesn't tell us, you know, John Smith who lives here, right. Right. it tells us, or license plates, it just says, this is, you know, the amount of vehicles, this is the speed, uh, this is the, qual uh, the, uh, the day and time in which the speeding occurs more than the others. Does it give you quality factors like one over, five over, ten yes. over? It yeah. does, okay. Yeah. It's well, like <clears throat> having the, because um, we do those traffic counts, the FERCOG does them, yes. but it's like having that Just having, yeah. even better but a all visual. the time. Exactly. Yeah. So the traffic counts are great because I, I have files of that saved on my computer and you can look at it and you can see, you know, uh, one to five of ten over and then, you know, thirty over in uh, the time of day in which it occurs. But you have to wait for that to get done, set up, processed and then emailed and I get it two weeks you know and they do a great job I'm not dissing that at all sure. but the sign being posted on say South Main the residents outside having a barbecue watching it going up oh, that guy's doing 50 right. or that guy's doing you know 42 but I 
could have sworn he was doing 55. Uh, that type of thing. So you have, you have both sides of that. There's conditioning on both sides. It does. Yeah, it does. I also think that if you're looking for specific data, you mentioned there's been a measurable uptick in citizen notification. Mm -hmm. And if you tie that in, if you mention, can you go back and call, say there's been this many calls, citizen calls reported about speeding, mm -hmm. and then you can tie that into, or, or our, the, the citizen reporting is not necessarily involved in speeding as much? Well, I mean, citizen reporting on, on everything from, yeah. you know, a, lo a lot of the citizen reporting has been for erratic operation. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, so just by looking at the numbers that we've had in the last two years, our self-initiated motor vehicle stops have doubled. So the officers are out there more and more and more and stopping more and more vehicles than they were the year before. That doesn't mean that all of a sudden last year we had more speeding. We've had the ability to do more this past year. Uh, and, and that's another reason why I showed you the graphics because the call volume uh, slowly is increasing for the last few years. We're able to now finally be able to display that to, to, to both boards. And that's, that's the, reason, the reasoning behind uh, the increase that I have on the uh, full-time officer wages. Does Deerfield have numbers yet away. from their system? Deerfield has numbers for the roads that they did, yes. So we can use those numbers to justify, you know, Something well, like those, right those numbers are specific for that road, uh, yeah. I get it. Yeah. But if it works you know, for them, chances are it, it, will, it will also work for us. Oh, most definitely. I, yeah, I've, I've been at meetings where, where uh, their police chief has ex expressed numerous times. Uh, it's uh, the senior center where we go there once a month or so when we do the, the, the meetings and have coffee with a cop and we talk to the elderly there. They have, he'll, he'll discuss, okay, on Sugarloaf Street, there were these many speeders on you know, this time of day. So we'd be able to extrapolate that same amount, that exact setup for us. So the nice thing with these new signs is we'll have actual data, not just anecdotal data or like, oh, it looks like the cars are going really fast. This will be actual hard data that we can use, which will be great. Yeah, and it'll be in concert with what we've already taken from FERCOC. Right. Because we've had it on North Main Street, down by North Silver. Yep. We've had it on Amherst Road, up by Bridge, and then down by Bubs, and then we've had it on you know different locations. Um, yeah. But one of the tricky things though that we learned with the whole North Main Street thing is be careful about what you provide for information and ask for because you know how we're trying to get the speed lower, but then they kind of go off, what is it, the 80th percentile 80th of percentile. speed? So you have to be careful because they could end up bumping up the speed limit if you, they find that, okay, now the 80% of the traffic is doing, you know, 55. Well, well let's no, raise this mass mentality. Yeah. Look at the uh, yeah, area. Faster, we should raise the limit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> look, look at the yeah. area down by uh, uh, 116 Flats or Sugar Bush, as we you yeah. know it. They dug that out, put in an island, put in some crosswalks that have been scraped over. Um, but that whole area has always been 50. You want to try to lower that speed limit? You need to do a traffic study. Well, luckily, we did one with FERCOG. Right. The 85th percentile shows that 50 is the speed. So Mass DOT is sticking with, with 50. Then they're hoping that with the natural calming uh, effects of a uh, knife edge island <clears throat> in the middle and the crosswalks and the, and the painted lines, that may reduce the speed. And when we do the traffic study again, once everything's up in place, maybe then we'll see that the uh, 85th percentile has dropped. Yeah, glorious. Yeah, it's but I, I, crazy. And, and I, glorious. And, and I, I guess one of, one of the things backwards. Back, back on the when I said four hours a day, one of the things with South County EMS that I was amazed is, is that we get, it's like 70% of the calls become between 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. Okay. I would have never guessed that. I was, I, 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 when Zach came up, and that's why we have an impact, we have an, what we call impact shifting on those hours. We, we bring in a second, second crew to handle those hours. Yep. I'm, I'm not saying you'd run four hours straight. Maybe you, you know Break that up. you have the highest level. Maybe it's Saturday night or um, Saturday, whatever the day, and, and you you would apply those. You would apply the the, the necessary people. Oh no, to, most to, definitely to, to get the, the best thing. So so I, I guess Francis, I would I, I know what you're asking, and I appreciate what you're asking. I just I haven't fully developed everything yet in my mind, but you're right. If we do something like that, we need to explain it and explain it well, and and, and to tr so that we give everybody the best opportunity. 
but I, I guess I'm, I'm asking out loud um, if Chief, maybe let's, let's kind of work something up as a proposal and see what okay. it looks like. And, and, and then we can have that discussion if it's a good idea um, as, as we think it through. I, I hadn't talked to him about that already, and I hadn't talked to anybody else about it, Francis. I was just kind of thinking as, as the Chief was talking. But I, but I do know my, our, I, I would say, quality of life in town is probably a lot of people, many people, are very concerned about about the uh, the speed of, of the cars and and how it impacts and 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 believe it or not the the community compact getting people out with sidewalks and 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 stuff we're actually putting more people on the on, on the sidewalks mm -hmm. and they see things which is a good thing but we just have to make sure they got to feel safe, safe. they got to feel safe oh, yeah. so yeah. Thank, thank you chief if you could do that so chief capital Ninety five hundred bucks for guns. Uh, yeah, so I, this is what the third year I think I I brought this up. Um, so I, it, the increase only went up five hundred because the money that we would expect to get back for the weapons that we currently have would go down a little bit. Um, we've had a couple of issues uh, come up on some of them, but we were able to successfully get them repaired uh, with no major cost. Um, but they are um, getting up there in, in age. Um, as you know, we have, uh, we have 10 part-timers, we have five full-timers to include myself. Um, so the idea would be to have uh, two uh, added on to that for uh, just in case, God forbid, there's an officer involved shooting or uh, there's a, uh, a, a, an issue with one of the weapons. You're not going to have that officer patrol with one, so you'd swap it out while the other one gets serviced, repaired, sent out. Well, if we have an armorer, the armorer could take care of it. Uh, that, so that raises it to 17, and then another two more would raise it to 19. Those two would be utilized for uh, potentially simulations. Uh, so when officers go to training, those could be specific for actual simulation training and not live fire uh, demonstrations and use that for uh, different types of officer trainings. Uh, so the idea would be to purchase 19 or 20, depending on how many we would get for um, uh, the dollar amount. We have not picked obviously because I don't want to put the cart before the horse. We want to know if we have the money before we get uh, the actual uh, weapon system. We have looked, uh, I mean, let's face it, a lot of the officers um, either have guns or have friends who have guns and they have many different ideas on where they should go. Uh, we've looked at different agencies that have guns from Six Hour to Smith & Wesson to Glock. Uh, we're not looking at the uh, mega bucks, you know, the, the very high priced uh, guns because um, that's I'm not buying a name, I'm buying something that's gonna work for the officers. Um, so we've been looking at different kinds just to see what's out there. There's different styles. There's nine millimeter, 40 caliber, and 45 caliber. Uh, the nine millimeter rounds are uh, cheaper. Uh, the 40 caliber rounds about the mid-grade. And of course the 45s are more expensive. Um, my personal uh, is, is I, I'd be looking at either nine mil or 40. Um, is what I'd be looking at. Um, I've, I've carried 40 my entire career. I, I have personally, I have 40s and I have 9s. So uh, I'm also a firearms instructor uh, for police department. So uh, we've, we've gone through a whole litany of different types of weapon systems to see what we have. Uh, the idea is that cost is specifically uh, uh, what it would cost to purchase those guns. Uh, and it doesn't account for any money we would get back right. from um, the trade-in for the, the weapons that we have. Just the expense. This is just the expense. This is to, if we, if we can't find a weapon that will fit the same holsters, then the replacement of those holsters would also cost with this. Um, one of the guns we were looking at that is basically the upgrade version of what we have um, doesn't fit the holster. Sure. And it's the same gun. It's just an upgraded version and it, it doesn't fit. It doesn't lock properly, uh, which uh, on weapons retention, uh, whether you fall on the ice it's or important. when you're in a fight, you, yeah. you need to hold on to that and not have it get removed. So, uh, but yeah, that's just a projected cost for uh, just the purchase of the weapons and all the holsters to go with them. Uh, if we get, and I, not if, yeah. if this is allowed, when we get that cost, then we would get the cost of the buyback and we could drop that money down and there would be less than that. Chief, have they, have they, have they, have they gone further with safety devices on, on guns besides 
the, the lever um, so that it can only be used by the officer that assigned um, that weapon? I've never seen it in law enforcement. Usually the law enforcement guns are no safeties. Um, I own a few guns and not a lot by, by the standards of the people that I work with too, but um, <laughs> other people have a lot more than I do. Uh, but uh, I can't tell you, I think maybe two have safeties built in um, because they were purchased before the push to get them done. But as far as the mechanisms to, to make sure that there's a certain amount of uh, pounds per square inch as you're squeezing or some type of biometrics, I haven't, I haven't seen that. Yeah, I, was just, I was just wondering because you, you mentioned, you, you, you talked about uh, the proper holster. And, and I know that many times you guys are responding by yourself or you're the first on scene by yourself. I was just wondering about security weapons and so they can't be turned and, and used. Sure. Well, those in, in that respect, the safety holsters, the, the, the weapons are secured on some type of platform where they involve either a, a lever or a hood, uh, some type of blocking so somebody can't then just walk up and just pull it out uh, like your cell phone out of your cell phone holder. There's a locking mechanism and there's a certain way. I remember when I started uh, 20 plus years ago where it was a, you know, push forward, tilt, angle, and then, you, you, come on, that's nothing that my body normally do, does. To try. And it's up here. Right. So how could I, More uh, I've gotten older, it's gotten down lower, so it's a little bit easier. But uh, the, the holster was so high and then you had to do this weird mechanism to take it out. Now they're doing so many things where whether it just be a lever by a finger, by a, your thumb, an extra hood. So in that type of safety, uh, those are coming out all the time. But as far as the actual weapon themselves, I mean, I haven't seen it in law enforcement. I'm, yeah, I'm, I th I'm pretty certain that devices like that increase the price of oh, dramatic. weapons like that by... I just want, I, I just try to, whatever these guys, I want them safe. Mm -hmm. I, I, I want our guys to be safe, yeah. our, our, our men and women. I well, guess. and that's the whole reason why a lot of departments went to tasers, and we carry tasers because right. that gives you another avenue before you have to go to deadly force. You, you shouldn't go from verbal to hands to gun. Right. You should be able to have some type of uh, a, a continu continuum, if you will, to, to, con to go forward and, 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 and give commands, but then utilize a non-lethal type of uh, command. Pepper spray, um, taser, things of that nature. Yeah, I don't know how you guys are able to sit in a car with everything you got on your belt. Never yeah, mind. I know. Walk. That's why we have car the, the seat covers because it, it wears out wears all out the time. So you have to put the seat cover on. Seventy five bucks will help keep a four hundred dollar seat. Right. So that's your only capital expense issue. That's, well, that's my only one that I'm uh, requesting. I am partnering with the fire chief. Uh, we're as you know the radios. Yeah. Uh, in in South uh, Shelburne Control and, and in Franklin County, we're looking at upgrading uh, through EOTS, uh that's with a T, um, to go and, and get uh, radios assigned to police officers and cruisers. We're looking at the 800 band. Um, for those of you who don't know, the radio we're on now is a UHF, so it's a um, ultra high frequency, whereas it's opposed to the U. HF, which was the ultra so high. You're on, you're on 400. We're on now. 400 band. And you're going to go to 800. We're going to go to 800. So the radios we have now will not communicate on the 800s. Uh, these radios, to give you an idea, a brand new radio, of, of, if they made them, of the radios that I have now, could cost a portable, could cost you between $600 and $1,400. These are now looking at, um, I think the cheapest one I saw was 4000 for just a portable. That's not kind of the ones that go in the car. The ones that go in the car are far more money. Um, so we're hoping to have something back and forth with EOPS and EOTS and, um, and, and we're trying to bring money or bring the awareness to, to you guys about we need to have something in place because even if they give us assigned radios, that doesn't count for programming and installations. Um, you know, if you're going to install a radio or even the base radio at the station or a radio into the cruiser, it's hourly rate for the person to come out, program them for these specific frequencies because you can't yeah. talk on the other ones. And then these are the ones, and then they install them into your car. So, you know, how many cars? We have four cruisers, we have a base station, how many portables, and then the fire department, right? You know, uh, so that's, that could be a potential lot of money. We do have 6,400, I think, in a radio line um, that we've just ha we haven't been touching because we knew that this was going to happen. We just kept asking the accountant to continue it, uh, but that's not going to cut it. I mean, 
fire chief was looking for quite a lot. And I, so, and I back him on that. That's my other. You no, know, last I heard is that the state has prioritized our county. County, yes. So the, and I, I think I heard that thurs, Thursday, Thursday night. I think I heard that they prioritized, they put Franklin County on, on the fast track. And, mm -hmm. and just so you know, if we didn't go to this upgraded system, it costs us like five or six million dollars to repair the system the that we have now that's an antique. So it's so there's expenses coming. Yes, and and the only way to make this work is to go in stages. So they're going to come back and let us know which agencies are going to be first, yeah. and those agencies could be in June. Right. So uh, have that's you, the case. Um, I don't know because I, I didn't account for a June mm -hmm. date. I don't have that in my budget. Um, so if they account, say we're one of the first towns. Uh, we're hoping maybe FERCOG will do that zero interest loan. They'll cover the cost, and then we can pay them back come July. But that would mean we'd have to pass something in the uh, capital expense that he's asking for it in April. Have, have, have you tested that? So the fire chief and some of his uh, staff, and uh, we did as well. The fire department did a lot more uh, than we did because most of the, the areas that the fire department's going to work, it's going to work for us. Uh, the areas we had problems were some of the basement apartments, yeah. Sugarloaf, Cliffside, especially up against yeah. the cliff. Um, so those are the, some of the major problems. The easiest way to fix that is to have your repeater. vehicles have a repeater. Well, just a ballpark figure, a cruiser radio with a repeater is about twelve to 14000 um, But it's not like your cell phone. You can't just slap a sticker on the window and say, hey, it's going to work. So, so you bought you you brought a new cruiser last year. Uh, yes, this past we haven't received it yet. We're hoping to get it soon. It's a I, race. I was, I was wondering, you still haven't received it, huh? No, it's a race between the fire truck and the police cruiser. Who's going to get here first? Uh, uh, the, the fire truck's in Connecticut. Okay, well, I was just in Mass. It just hasn't been finished with the radios and everything else. Yeah. Well, there's just in Connecticut. They built it. All right, so all right, it's we'll not moving, here. but not it's moving. in Connecticut. <laughs> we'll see who gets here first. Well, almost, but see. When you buy a fire truck, there, there's a lot of things that goes, it's amazing. But anyway, mm -hmm. so so now, did you buy the Dodge? Dodge Durango. Uh, V6, because no other cars had a V6. Uh, the Tahoe, we could have gotten about the same cost, but they were bigger. Um, the only sedans that we could find were the Charger, that's only a V8. Um, they don't make Crown Vicks anymore. Uh, and then we could start looking at electric cruisers or hybrids. The only electric cruiser that I know of right now is the Chevy Volt, the, the little oh, one there. Yeah. But there's that's a there's a radius. Yeah. There's, you can't go too far with it, you know, because the battery dies out. But that's no Tesla like, cruisers yet. It's more like a golf cart than a cruiser. <laughs> yeah. So we're looking at different options. But, but, but good, the good news is there's grants out there. If if we can yeah. get a cruiser on a grant and not have any cost to the town, I'll, I'll bring it to you and let you know. Well, that's um, actually good. We just got an email for a light duty electric vehicles, which right. that wouldn't account for. But uh, yeah, I mean, we still. don't have, we're not admin heavy. Uh, we don't have a lot of admin administrators just running around just serving papers and stuff. Um, but, you know, it's, it's something anything's to look possible. at in the future. Yeah. 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 Uh, the other thing, just to let you know, I am in the middle of trying to piece together two separate grants. One is a community policing grant, it's a micro grant. Um, and that would be more for uh, police officers, community involvement, maybe foot patrols, maybe introducing a bike program, do bike patrols uh, yeah, through that grant. Bike patrols. Um, yeah. yeah. That'd be um, very good. There's two or three of us that are bike cobweb certified to ride around. And then another one is uh, kind of like the Cops Fast Grant that I'm, I'm trying to get. Uh, I, I was successful in getting it in my, my last town a few years back. Um, the paperwork is atrocious and it's horrible, uh, but it's well worth it once you get it. Uh, if we're able to get that, um, the idea would be that they would give us, uh, it, the grant would pay for 75% uh, of costs and benefits of a brand new officer. Uh, so if we're successful in getting that, and I'm hoping to find out, because it's due in March, early March, uh, and I'm hoping that they would tell us well before the April, 30, uh, the, the April meeting, um, if that's a possibility. So it would pay 75% of that, uh, as opposed to you know uh, the full cost, uh, and it's good for three years. That's, that's for a full time? Full time. Nice. So um, one can only hope. 
Um, but that full timer would have to be on a bike. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know about that. Right. Or full. Our, our, our weather is six months winter, three months spring, and then two months summer. A tricycle. It, it is, it is amazing. Really <laughs> about how policing in the studies, when about a police officer on bike, the percentage, how much more that officer is approachable because he's on a bike mm -hmm. versus in a cruiser. Mm -hmm. oh, people so you can don't see think. Him. People don't even think twice about stopping an officer that's on a bike or walking to talk to him versus or her versus someone that's in a cruiser they they would not even think about stopping a cruiser but they see an officer on a bike or walking and they would stop and and, ask. and, and to go with that it wouldn't be in place of a patrol it, you know so it would be an extra added on so it wouldn't be you know the officer on duty is his sole response is on that bicycle that's not what we're looking at doing we're lucky a lot of the the public does live in the, the flat area uh, of Sunderland, um, <laughs> but they're not going to be trekking up to uh, you know reservation road to try to yeah. respond from say bugs. <laughs> it's not going to happen. Yeah. Uh, but different events, uh, public Country events. Town does that, don't they? I think they have there's a few towns that still do it. Yeah, some towns have kind of gotten away from it. Uh, we're looking at different ways of of whether you know buying used bikes or, or, or whatnot, but. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just... It's, it's all who the officers are, too. Yes. And, and if you have officers that are willing... I mean, if you have some off, some departments have officers that are really into that. Yeah. yeah. In other words, great in urban settings, obviously. It does. Yeah. We we're, end not, up, we're not buying a horse chief. No, we're not buying a horse <laughs> <laughs> We did put an officer on a bike during we're the... We're not uh, accepting the donation of a horse, either. Oh. Some, yeah, yeah. Well, I don't want a donation of a horse. Some people may have seen a, a bicycle, uh, officer on a bicycle during trick-or-treat. Yeah. We had officers on foot. We had one officer on a bicycle, so... You know, different events like that, and just do different things. So that makes sense. That's gone over very well, by the way. Oh, good. The, the patrols are. At, they have it. They love it. That's great. You can't even you can't even tell them no anymore. They're like, when? Right, what are we doing this year? <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Well, thanks. Mm -hmm. Questions of the chief. Thanks, chief. Appreciate the dialogue. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I got two or three years ago, I could talk a dog up a meat wagon, so you have to shut me up. <laughs> you take those or? So we got minutes with 27. Yeah. 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 Motion made and seconded for the minutes of the 27th. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Three to zero, please. Okay. Select board updates. Oh, okay. Add the capital planning and the member of the, of the board went to the Summer Elementary School walkthrough with the administration. Talk about the challenges the building has and some of the equipment. Uh, it was a very good meeting and a very good uh, walkthrough. So we'll be seeing what they're. Yeah. ATM calendar is in front of us. And it looks like these dates are right. Hard to think. Well, we're ready, ready for it. We're planning here. now for. All the way through to April, into May. Okay, so it looks like a calendar, right? April 24, annual town meeting. So articles are due by March 13th. Uh, sign, we sign a warrant, we'll, open, we'll probably open it soon. April 13th, uh, last day to mail notices, April 15th. Warrant to be posted April 17th. And then meet with the Finance Committee, finalize the warrant articles the 13th. This is all April now. And for those uh, who are paying attention, the last day to register to vote is actually April 4th here at the town office building. So, calendar looks about right. It's that time, Tom. It's calendar time. Calendar time, Scott. Yep. Okay. Calendar time. Live or die, Matt. That one stays right in the other book.
uh, surplus equipment. We have a letter from the highway. I'd like to declare our old one-ton sander as surplus equipment. The sander has been sitting out back for five years. The town of Gill has interest in the sander. would like to purchase it from the town with valuation of less than $1,000. Motion. Second. Motion is made and seconded to declare a piece of surplus equipment. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Three zero, please. Okay. And lastly, we have a uh, second. Lastly, we have a personnel committee resignation. Due to personal issues, not um, unfortunately not be able to devote the time needed and effort to continue involvement in the personnel committee, and effectively in resigning in February 1, 2020. I appreciate the opportunity. I'm sorry. I appreciate the appointment and the support of the committee. It's been very helpful in getting me to these meetings. Uh, sincerely, Richard Lepaglia. Motion. Okay. Motion to accept the resignation. Uh, second, with regret and deep thanks to, to somebody who's lived near and uh, worked with Richard Lepaglia for years. I just, his input and his has been greatly appreciated. Well, he'll be missed. So many, so many things he's worked on over the yeah. years. Uh, maybe we can send him a letter. Have ready for next our next yeah, meeting for signature. Okay, motion's made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Three to zero, please. Which means we have an opening of the personnel committee. So anyone interested in the personnel committee, please contact the office, and uh, we can uh, get an appointment for the remainder of this appointment schedule. Okay, we're gonna. Any other questions, board members? Closing comments from town administrator. Town administrator update. <laughs> no. <laughs> Coming back tomorrow. Okay, good. That's an update. There you go. <laughs> good here tomorrow. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah well, finish, yeah. It's kind of yeah, it's true. So, uh, not having any more updates, we are going to adjourn to executive session again under Mass General Law, Chapter 30, Section 21, Subsection 7. All we're, sorry, note number 7. All we're doing is to review executive session minutes and then get them to be able to be uh, released to the public. And we will be adjourning to open session only, we will be returning to open session only to adjourn. And this will be a roll call. Is, is there a motion? Motion. Second. There's a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. This will be a roll call vote. Mr. Pierce? Aye. 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 Mr. Feinkevitz? Aye. Mr. Bergeron? Aye. Okay, thank you, Oz.